Greetings and welcome back to Photo Justice Photo Moment. We're in the Q&A section talking about ProRes RAW, and hopefully there are some good questions coming up. I've seen a lot of chit-chat flying by, but not a lot of questions. So if you have a question, remember, put it up on the screen with a at Photo Joseph in front of it. That will show up bright red on my screen, but for now I'm just going to take a quick look at the comments and see what people are saying, um, see what we're getting over here. So get past our initial good mornings. And uh, Shiznit says, ProRes RAW is an interesting premise. Blackmagic Design BMD says, however, that they still prefer their own raw DNG. Well, of course they do. Um, because of the color science information. Okay, I've never shot with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. I'm sure it's great. I do shoot with the Blackmagic uh, uh, studio cameras. What are they? Micro studio cameras. I had to work really hard to get the color to look the way that I want it to look out of it. I way prefer the look coming out of certainly my Panasonic or Canon or Nikon than I do out of the Blackmagic cameras natively. That's not to say anything is wrong with them. It's just different for me personally. And, you know, of course, they're going to say they like their color science better, um, but I'm not a huge fan. Now, again, I haven't worked with the uh, with their actual pocket cinema camera, so it might be different uh, and maybe it is better. But uh, I don't know. I mean, you see what you can do in here. You have complete control over your color. I think you probably make the shot look like whatever you wanted it to look like using uh, using raw footage. So we'll see. Uh, wondering what manufacturers will do here. So am I. So am I. Shizna says, really want that Atomos Ninja 5 that could possibly use for such a thing. That is correct. The Ninja 5 was an announced product. It's not a shipping product. It is a 5-inch Ninja, uh, basically a Ninja Inferno or, or um, uh, Shogun or just a 5-inch version of this. It will be able to record ProRes RAW, which is pretty insane. So you get a tiny little screen, a little 5-inch screen. You put that on top of your camera and shoot ProRes RAW into it. And I think that's... That's the coolest thing about it, being smaller, is that you can actually just mount it on top of your camera uh, and shoot, as opposed to having to have the cage and a much bigger screen. I love, I absolutely love having the big screen of the Ninja, uh, of the Ninjas and the Infernos that I have now, but being able to do it smaller, more run and gun, even better. It's crazy the things we go, oh, it's so big. It used to be like huge, and now it's, anyway, progress. Uh, Steve Seely says, is it possible to use RAW for green screen? Of course. Absolutely, that would probably give you the best green screen king ever because the biggest problem with green screen is the edges, right? The fringing that you get, any haloing, any reflection, green wrapping around, uh, this would absolutely be a benefit to that. So yeah, if you're doing green screen, for sure, shooting raw should be a big help. Trevor says, incredible how much information can be stored in raw. Very true. It's why I love working in raw. But if you like a fast work workflow, you're in for a surprise. Until now, assuming you have a camera that can shoot it. The FS5 has around 14 plus stops of dynamic range. It really shows that in that clip. Yeah, yeah, definitely impressive dynamic range in there. Um, the Mac shoots through ProRes like butter. It's a big reason I love my Mac. That it does. Uh, someone asked what program that was. Where that was Final Cut Pro 10, and that was the newest. So it's 10.4.1. That was the update that was released at an AB last week. Uh, free update, of course. If you bought Final Cut Pro, when did it come out? Seven or eight years ago for 300 bucks. Never had to pay for an upgrade. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, it's not to say that Apple won't ever charge for an upgrade, but at this point, uh, they haven't, and that's kind of insane how, how far it's come this, um, so far. Uh, Rich says, is the shots only overexposed due to being on a Rec. 709 timeline with the scope also in Rec. 709? No. What does it look like on Rec. 2020? So these were shot two stops over on purpose. On a Rec. 2020 timeline, well, actually, you know what? Here, we can look at this. Let's do this. Let me set this timeline to Rec. 2020. And we'll go to PQ, and let me do a full reset. Okay, so this shot is, let's actually look at one we already looked at. Let's go back to the original one here that I looked at, and let me take off the adjustments that have been applied to this. Um, shoot, what am I looking for? Um, what am I looking for? There we go. Delete that, and let's reset the transform. There we go. Okay, so there's that shot. Here you can see the range of this right here. So you can't look at the video itself because it's clearly clipping because you're not looking at an HDR monitor, but you can see that over here in the uh, in the RGB parade. So its darkest is very low. I love this kind of logarithmic curve in here. There's from zero to 10. So at its darkest, we're still technically at zero, a little bit, a little bit about one. And then the brightest point is over 2K, about two and a half K. So two and a half thousand nits versus the 100 that you get in Rec. 709. So this is still out of range of most HDR monitors, but um, but for the spec goes all the way up to 10K, so we're well within that spec. So what this really shows us is that we're not clipping. 
nothing has been clipped. So yeah, that's an impressive sensor. It has definitely got some massive dynamic range and we have no clipping in this file. So the clipping we're seeing here is of course because it is only a Rec. 709 display, a standard um, dynamic range display. Uh, let's see here. Michael Sebastian says there's something similar for Final Cut 10 for Windows. I'm sorry, but no. Um, Premiere's great. Premiere's absolutely great. Uh, very much a, you know, taste great, less filling kind of an argument. Um, camera, computer just freaked out. Um, but no, I'm, I'm a Final Cut fan. I really, really love Final Cut. It is a very different experience than Premiere, but Premiere is a fantastic editor as well. Um, you can't do ProRes RAW, though, in Premiere. That is a Final Cut thing because it's, you know, ProRes RAW is a Final Cut technology. So, so there's that. And Trevor says, there's Avid, which was slash is the industry standard for editing, but has a pretty steep learning curve. I wouldn't say is. I would say was. Was is very good. Back, and we're going back in history a little bit here. Back when I worked at Apple in early 2000s, that's when we were doing battle against Avid. And I remember an ad campaign that we launched when Final Cut Pro was a $2,000 piece of software. And it was, um, the ad said something like Media Composer, now 98% off, because we, you know, you know, a little marketing fluff there. It wasn't quite all the features that a Media Composer had, but they were getting closer. And these days, uh, you know, it's really a preference. What do you prefer working in? And um, I, I don't know where... I don't know where they sit these days anymore on the on the scale. And you know, you've got your Final Cut, you got Premiere, you got your DaVinci Resolve. All of those are top tier editors with great color grading tools, great file management tools. Um, they're just fantastic all the way across. Unless you walk into a studio that's all Avid, I don't know. I don't know that it's yeah, Final Cut and Premiere and and Resolve. It's the way to go these days. Um, Brian says DaVinci Resolve for Windows as well. Yes, that is true. DaVinci Resolve is on Windows as well. But again, they're not going to do ProRes RAW, but it is a fantastic editor. So yeah, if you want Final Cut, then Final Cut's only on Mac. Resolve and Premiere are both on Windows as well. Okay, uh, I'm going to see anything else coming up in here for questions. So unless anything pops up in the last minute, we are going to run out of here. Trevor, Resolve continues to add a ton of functionality, and it's what I work with the most. Awesome, but in production houses, you still find Avid. Oh, interesting. I know a lot of production houses where you find Resolve or Final Cut or Premiere as well, but you know. Uh, it all depends on where you go, doesn't it? But yeah, they're all fantastic. They really are. There's nothing wrong with any of them. Uh, Final Cut has the the magnetic timeline, which some people love. I love it. Some people can't stand it. That's fine. Totally different approach to editing. But um, I think once you get used to it, there's kind of no going back. It feels much more natural. But that's me. You know, that is uh, that is not to say anything bad about the other editors because they're all really awesome. I saw some very very cool demos um, of Premiere at NAB, their new color matching tools. Really awesome. So anyway, all right. Oh, look, another one with my name on it. And then we're going to knock it, uh, knock this thing off. Brian McGrew says, do you know of a video cam app for the iPhone that I'll put clean HDMI instead of record? Um, I think Filmic outputting over Apple AV to HDMI into Wirecast poor man studio camera. No, I do not believe that the Apple specs will allow any app to output clean video. Wait, no, that's not true, is it? Because when you're playing, that's an interesting question. Okay, no, I just realized that I said it's not true because you can hook up your HDMI adapter and get um, video out for something like uh, uh, YouTube or, or Netflix, whatever, and play your video out. Actually, Netflix might not because it's encrypted. But anyway, you can do HDMI out. I, you know, I don't know. I do not know. It's a good question for Filmic, though. Filmic would be the place to start because they have the most robust, like, proper video shooting app. I would check with them. If anyone will know, they will know. All right, folks, that's it. We're going to knock it off. We're going to get out of here. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that was interesting, educational, and all that good stuff. And, uh, and with that, we're going to pop out of here, and we'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye.